Hello and welcome. This is Physics 1403, Stars and Galaxies. Today we're going to talk about uh, the night sky or the sky in general. I mean, in the daytime we don't see stars, we do see them in the nighttime. That's why it's the night sky, but this applies to actually uh, objects which you can see during day, like the sun as well. All right. So, um, we just need a little bit um, foundation um, without going into too much mathematical detail. You know, we have to understand a little bit uh, what coordinates mean, okay? Coordinates. A coordinate is a system to locate an object which occupies a certain point in space or place in space, location in space, all right? Now, you're already familiar with the idea of coordinates if you're using GPS or um, I'm sure you've seen some math where you had to apply uh, Cartesian coordinates. So let's start there. So let's start with Cartesian coordinates, also called rectangular coordinates rectangular coordinates. This, um, to give you an example, let's take a, um, a surface, okay? A flat surface, like a paper. Flat surface, okay? A sheet of paper. Now pick a point here, let's say over here. Call this point P. And another point over here, call it Q. How can we define these two points or any point that we want uh, using numbers? Pretty much what coordinates is all about, all right? About uniquely defining the location. Okay. Very common and easy method is using these Cartesian coordinates. All you need is is uh, two axes. Okay. You can pick any direction. I'm just going to pick an horizontal direction like this. I'm going to call it X and I'm going to pick a line which is perpendicular to the first line. I'm going to call it Y. Okay. These are the two axes I'm going to use. Well, these can mean any orientation. All right. Doesn't matter. But once you pick those lines, you stick with them and the points they interact is called or intersect is called uh, the origin. Origin. And then you put numbers. Okay, to the right of the origin, for instance, along the x direction, put some numbers one, two, three, four, etc. And then on the negative side, you have negative numbers on the left side. Okay, negative one, negative two. Do the same thing for the y axis one, two, three, four, going all the way to infinity, pretty much, right? And in the lower part, you have the negative ones. And consider the uh, projection of these points onto these axes. Hence the name uh, rectangular coordinates, because you, what you're forming here is a rectangle, right? With 90 degrees at each corner. So this happens to be uh, 4 and 3. So we call these the X and Y coordinates. You can put them in parentheses like this. Same thing for Q. In this case, let's see, Q was here. This will be the Y projection. This is the X projection. Let's say this is negative three here. Write the X one first, negative three, and then you have negative one, which corresponds to the Y coordinate of the point Q. And you have it, okay? So any point on this plane can be uniquely defined using just a pair of numbers. Very convenient. It's called Cartesian or rectangular coordinates. You can do it in three dimensions as well. All you have to do is to add one more axis. Okay, now uh, your plane was this. Now you add one more axis to that. Let's do it. So this is our X. This is Y. I'm just going to add one more line, let's say here, 
call it z remember x and y were perpendicular and z and y are perpendicular as well and so are z and x so this way z is actually perpendicular to the plane that is defined by x and y all right so uh, just like you've numbered uh, the, the points along the y and x axes you could do the same for same thing for z okay you'll have one two three and then negative one negative two etc and then y and x will have those points as well so now in my 3d space 3d space any point which is the realistic space right let's say over here you can first project this to the xy plane and find the corresponding x coordinate and then the y coordinate which are these two numbers and then you draw a line uh, which is parallel to the xy plane and then hit the z-axis over here so this point now will be expressed in terms of three points instead of two right really simple say one two and then one again if this is one two and then this point is one etc now this seems pretty straightforward okay i mean you cannot go wrong with this and all three axes extend all the way to infinity so everything is covered all right it is convenient except for this what we're doing today okay when you um switch to astronomy um, we need uh, a way to define where the stars are obviously and we live in a 3d universe so at first this seems reasonable but in fact it's not well, you can put uh, Earth at the center, at the origin, and then the stars are maybe here, over there, here, billions and billions of stars. Well, how are you going to determine how far those stars are from the Earth? There are ways to do it, but it's not practical, especially if you want to do it uh, with a uh, telescope you can buy online, you want to do it at home, amateur astronomy, okay? I mean, there's no, maybe, uh, you can't measure the distance to the star, but you want to catalog the stars which you can find uh, through your telescope. This is not practical for the reason that they are really far from us and you don't really know how far they are, okay? That's one reason. Um, another reason is um, you want to be able to come up with some coordinates which are also helpful uh, to you on Earth, meaning to find the location of a point on the Earth. Well, Earth is a globe, right? A sphere. A sphere. And you can pick points on Earth. Let's say Houston is here and uh, Denmark is over there these are just points distributed all over the sphere and if you want to use um, those X Y and Z's you can I mean, no problem you just need to pick an origin which could be Earth center and then yeah you can find the uh, three numbers for each city on earth but then again it's it's like too much work too much work um, because you have to find all those projections to the x, y, and z axis. So there's a better way, obviously. That's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to switch from Cartesian coordinates to another coordinate system, which works well for spherical symmetry. Okay. Again, this will help us to locate points on Earth and also to locate points in the sky. Now you may say, okay, Earth is a globe, but the sky is, well, it doesn't have a shape, okay? I mean, it's just, it goes all the way to, we don't know how far, far it goes, maybe infinity. So how are we going <clears> to <throat> connect that to a sphere, all right? Well, there's a way. There's a way to do that. Um, so let's, let's get to that. Now, 
So we have two problems, the point on a sphere, the Earth, also the point as a proposition of the star, okay? Two problems. Let's attack the first problem first, which is finding the points on a uh, sphere. Now, there is one major problem. So let's say you pick two points, Houston and a city in Denmark, all right? And then you pick, and then you connect those two points, let's say. All right, well, it doesn't have to be as far as Houston, Texas, and Denmark. It could be just someone uh, six feet away from me, okay? It doesn't matter really. Now, you can just connect those two points with a straight line. And then you can start walking, all right? How? Well, you can uh, pick a direction for walking. So the person is, who is here can say, I'm gonna walk in this direction, which is, let's say, perpendicular to that line, which I just draw, okay? And your friend may say the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna walk in the same direction then. He has his protractor and then picks a direction, which is at 90 degrees to the original line. Okay. Now, if you were, if you two were doing this on a flat surface, like this one here, pick two points, Q and P, and start walking in the same direction. Let's say this direction. Actually, uh, let's do it the same way. Connect the two points and then pick a direction perpendicular to that. And then this one. All right, so what, what's gonna happen? These two will keep walking. They can walk for hours and hours and hours. They will never uh, get close to each other or go far away from each other, right? Basically, these two lines will be parallel. That's because it's a flat surface. If you try to do it on a globe, on a sphere, on a curved surface, eventually they will meet. Right there. Okay, that's always the case on a sphere. You start parallel, but then you end up crossing paths with the other guy. Although initially uh, you, you were going in the same direction. Uh, well, I mean, not really going to be used today, but you could do it on a saddle geometry. A saddle. And then you could start parallel, but then you can deviate from original. That's a different type of geometry, right? Like on a spherical geometry, if you, you, have a, you end up with a triangle here, if you add the angles, 90 plus 90, the sum of the inner angles will be larger than 180. If you draw a, a triangle on a saddle surface, the sum of the inner angles will be less than 180. So we have geometries which do not behave like a flat surface. Now let's focus on only the globe. So we have, obviously, a problem here. Parallel lines do not stay parallel. They intersect. So we have to give up the Cartesian coordinate system. We have to stick with something which is more practical. Well, first of all, these points, H and D, or any other point, are the same distance from the center. Right? That would be the radius of the sphere. Wherever you go on the sphere, you always are away from the center. Okay? So we don't really need um, three coordinates to find a point on the sphere. Two will be enough. Two will be enough. And 
This is how we do it. We take our sphere. We know where its center is. Now imagine a line that goes through the center. All right. And now uh, perpendicular to that line, imagine a plane. Now the points where the plane intersects with the sphere is actually a circle. It'll be a circle right here and the other side like that. Now if you move that plane up and down, the circle will become larger or smaller. It shrinks to a point over here and over there, but in the middle, right there, you have the actually largest circle. This circle divides the sphere and from now on whenever I say sphere I'm talking about the surface of the sphere, okay? A two-dimensional object. This line, which is called the equator, divides the sphere into two halves, which we call hemispheres. is a hemisphere that's another hemisphere so the largest circle is the equator that divides the sphere into two equal parts and these lines which are on uh, parallel slices let's give the name Okay, these are parallels, so let's call them parallel for now. Parallels. Okay, remember their size gets smaller when you hit the point up there and down there. And let's call these points poles. Pole. All right, now on Earth we call them obviously the North and South. So North Pole and the uh, South Pole. Just cardinal directions. North and South. So instead of using the Cartesian X and Y's, now we need a, we need two numbers and one of them will tell us which parallel is this point on okay so let's mark a point right here let's say this is a point this point belongs to that circle to that parallel or to that uh, circle which is parallel to the equator okay so that number we need two numbers the first number will be called the latitude latitude okay so uh, in terms of numbers what are they I mean do they go like one two three four no we're gonna use angles actually angles um, now this point and this point over there have the same latitude let's just join this point to the center of the sphere and then find this angle here, call it theta, all right? That theta will be our latitude. Now obviously theta uh, is zero if your point is on the equator, the angle is zero. So that's where you start, zero. And now here it looks like 45 degrees maybe, it goes all the way up to 90 degrees right so theta can be anything between 0 and 90 degrees what about uh, a point on the uh, southern hemisphere let's say here you find an angle here well now you're gonna be below the zero so are we gonna use negative numbers 
you can, but the uh, convention is we use um, the letter S to represent south. So if this is, let's say, if that is negative 45 degrees, we just call it 45 degrees south. All right. And this will be theta degrees north. Okay. So the number will be always between 0 and 90. But we're going to use the letters N or S to denote whether it's in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere. For Houston, it is 29 uh, or 30 ish. Okay, let's say a point in uh, north of Houston, 30 degrees north. Okay, so 30 degrees north. That is the latitude of that point. Okay. But keep in mind, it could be any point along this circle, along the perimeter of the circle. The latitude will not change. All right. The latitude will not change. That's why we need another number to know exactly where we are. And we're going to call it the longitude or longitude. Longitude. I'm going to come to that in a second. Um, I was talking about uh, Houston is 29 or 30 degrees north um, like if you extend it to a point uh, let's say we are here right now this is Houston and then you want to find the point on the other side of the globe where is it all right so you would just extend that line that goes through Houston and the center of the Earth so that this is also theta here. You just have to add the letter S. This will be uh, 30 degrees south. That will be the uh, latitude of that point, probably somewhere in uh, the Indian Ocean. All right. Okay, so what is... Uh, Long longitude then longitude tells you where you are on this circle now um, we need to pick a starting point just like the equator was a starting point for our latitude that was zero right we need a starting point on our sphere where the longitude the second number in your coordinate system has to be zero let's say this one imagine a line or another circle which is perpendicular to the original circle circles equator and the other parallels okay so those two lines intersect at 90 degrees always these are called the uh, longitudes or meridian that's another name meridians and we pick a zero meridian or prime meridian prime meridian and this is by convention uh, in Greenwich England That's the prime meridian line. It's zero. So the points which are to the west, like North America, is to the west of England. Those numbers increase in that direction. I think Houston is uh, 95 degrees west of Greenwich, England. So that's the longitude, okay? So 30 degrees north and 95 degrees west would be the coordinate of a point which is uh, a little bit north of Houston let's say and if you live in Russia let's say that's east of England right so the numbers will also increase in that direction we just need to add the letter E okay so a point over here would be 30 degrees north latitude 
but let's say a hundred degrees east. Okay, so what about that point in the Indian Ocean, which was just the opposite of Houston? We know that the latitude is 30, 30 degrees south. What about the uh, longitude? All you have to do is to find the point which is 180 degrees from Houston, right? So uh, subtract uh, 95 from 180, that is 85 degrees. So this point over here should be 85 degrees east of Greenwich, England, the prime meridian. 85, 85 degrees uh, east. Okay, so these two points are just the opposite. Now, most of the points you will find in Texas will be in the ocean over there. Um, if you go to South America, maybe Argentina will correspond to a point in Japan on the other side. Okay, you can play with this. Actually, let's just do it. Uh, Let's go to uh, Stellarium. All right, now don't worry about it. I'm gonna explain what you have here. Let's just go to the coordinates, location window, F6. Okay, we have Houston over here. Okay, probably you can't see it right now. Let me just uh, turn this on. All right, so here we have the location window. Here is Houston. Latitude, uh, north 29 degrees, 45 minutes, and longitude is 95 degrees west. So let's make north uh, south here. Let's change letter N to S. All right. And the longitude, it was 85 degrees east. So here, 85. And uh, change W to E. Oops. And there you are. If I click this again, now this red point shifted here. You see, this is India and Australia. You find a point over here. Now let's do it for, I said Japan, right? Let's pick a city in Tokyo, uh, Japan. Let's say Tokyo. Tokyo, Japan. I click on it right there. So what are the coordinates of Tokyo? 35 degrees north. Okay, let's change this to south south and then we have 139 so 180 minus 139 41 so we need 41 degrees west 41 41 degrees west let me click it again okay almost uh Some point here. Did I do it right? Okay, so that's the point which corresponds to uh, Tokyo on the other side of the globe. Of course, we have a projection. Uh, flat projection of the globe that's why these two points appear like those okay so let me uh, turn this off for now okay so these are the uh, two numbers required to define a point on the globe the latitude and longitude so the numbers um, range between zero and 180 for longitude and uh, zero and 90 for latitude and we use the letters uh, not n and s to define the hemispheres and the east west of the prime meridian goes with the uh, longitude number now let's come to the second um, place where we use these uh, coordinate system. 
the stars, basically. So, let me just redraw here a globe. This is our Earth. Okay, now we have the North and South Poles. Let's also write those here. And we know that uh, the Earth rotates around this axis that goes through the North and South Poles in this direction. Okay, so a point here, this is where we are. Okay, it's nighttime and we want to observe the sky. So here's we are. It's a clear night. We see all the stars, all right? And then uh, there are no mountains around, just a flat place like Texas. So we can see as far as we can until the horizon, all right? So when I say horizon, of course, I'm talking about from your eye level to the furthest, farthest point that you can see, which will be here in every direction, right? In every direction and then this is the north this is the south direction but of course if you repeat that in all directions you end up with you know pretty much a uh, disc that's your that's the range that you can see uh, uh, on earth that's the horizon right but this picture is exaggerating I'm you're not this tall right so what you really actually should draw here instead of this uh, disc is a line which is pretty much uh, tangential okay I mean I still have to draw it larger than it really is but this is pretty much how far you can see I mean you can see all the way to infinity if you look at the star but that's the Direction, let's put it that way. This is the northerly direction. And this is the south. Now, here's how the uh, spherical coordinates help us. When you see a star over here, remember, you don't know how far that star really is. Now we may see another star next to it, but that star may be 10 times farther away. All right, you're only here seeing these two stars, thinking that they are close to each other. Yeah, they're close, but actually they're really far because you don't know how far they are. So instead of thinking about the distance of each star from where you are, just think about how far they are apart from each other, okay? Think in terms of angles, pretty much. That's what we're doing here. This angle here is what we actually really care, okay? If we start thinking in terms of uh, angles and we don't care about how far they are from us, we might as well uh, think about the projection of all these stars on a hemisphere above us like a dome and you can just project those stars onto that dome so I'm gonna draw that dome here let's use red I'm gonna draw a dome a fictitious dome above myself here this is the portion of the sky can I see I can see and these two stars will be projected onto that dome right there actually I can do it for any star that I can see so those stars will be only on this dome, okay? I mean, it's a 3D dome. It's like a hemisphere, if you will, okay? Those stars are only on that dome. And this has an actually historical, uh, there's a historical reason for this too. Uh, in the old times, um, using the geocentric model from the classical antiquity, you know? meaning uh, the Earth was the center of the universe and everything, stars, galaxies, well, they didn't know about galaxies, the planets, 
sun, the moon were revolving around the earth. That was the idea, which was kind of natural. That's the same thing uh, that you would really observe if you're looking at the sky. Just wait there for an hour, everything will be rotated in one hour. You can detect it easily. Uh, well, of course, we know that it happens because of the rotation of the Earth around its own axis, right? So draw a line parallel to this uh, north-south line here. If you look at the sky in this direction, you will find a, if you live in the northern hemisphere, you will find a star here, which we call the uh, star Polaris. And everything else rotates around the star, but that star pretty much doesn't change its location. The North Star or the Polaris. But everything else, including uh, the Sun and the planets and the stars, seem to be revolving around that fixed point. In the Southern Hemisphere, you don't really see a star there um, with naked eye. But in the Northern Hemisphere, you do have one, a star like that. So it's as if those stars are actually on a sphere. That's why they used to think that all the stars were on one sphere, the sun was on another sphere, and the planets had their own spheres. This was the geocentric model. So there's a historical reason why uh, this was actually practically, let's say, uh, very useful. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to imagine that these stars are on this uh, surface, which we call the uh, celestial sphere. Celestial sphere or dome, if you only think about the hemisphere, it's celestial dome, or if you complete it to a sphere, it's the uh, celestial sphere. So just like we define the coordinates on our globe, on our Earth, using the latitude and longitude, just two numbers, we can always use two numbers, a pair of numbers, to define a point on the celestial sphere. Okay, And uh, there are ways to do it. We're going to do uh, two of them today. Um, so coordinates. on the celestial sphere. The first way is, um, well, in both ways require two numbers. The first uh, pair will be about, um, let's start with actually, uh, the, the, the thing that would correspond to a um, north-south orientation, okay? And that's what we call a declination. Declination. Which uh, gives you the point on the celestial sphere in the north and south direction. Okay, so declination, um, the, uh, this point, which is the celestial north pole, celestial north pole, will be of declination 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and if you think about a line that is at 90 degrees to that original red line here, and think about the all those lines, which constitute a sort of an equator, okay, that's at zero degrees. So the de declination for the celestial equator, celestial equator is at zero degrees. This is what we call the declination of it. Okay. 
Now, what about uh, the points which are below uh, the celestial equator? Those will be negative, all right? So any angle, any point here between the horizon or let's say uh, in the south direction above the horizon and, and the celestial equator will have a declination which is less than zero. Okay, so this region here will have negative, negative declination coordinates, declination. What about negative 90, for instance? Well, negative 90 will be right here. So that's the celestial uh, south pole, right? Celestial South Pole, but if you pick a point in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, which we did, that point will be below the horizon in the south direction. You can't see it, all right? It's below the horizon. So equator is right here on Earth, and the point we picked was in the northern hemisphere with a latitude equal to theta, let's say. Right? Now let's just use some basic geometry to determine what the uh, declination of, let's say, um, the north is or the southern horizon is, right? Remember the uh, north pole is at 90 and the celestial equator is at zero. These are the declinations. So this radius is perpendicular to that north-south direction, okay? So you can think of a parallel line here. Okay, so this will also be theta, which will make this angle also, theta. So that will be the actually also declination of this point here, north, the cardinal north. And imagine a circle around the celestial pole Every point on the celestial dome, on that circle, will have the same declination, which is equal to theta, okay? Any point that you pick, any point, including north, will have the same declination, declination equal to theta, okay? If it's Houston, it is 30 degrees. So using the same logic, you can find um, let's say let's extend this line here that goes through the uh, radius and see where it meets the celestial dome right there. So if you just turn your head straight up, okay, right above you, which we call the zenith. This is the point right above you. Well, the zenith, what about its declination, right? All you have to do is to consider this angle here, which is also theta. See, the equator and the celestial equator, these lines are parallel, and this line is intersecting those two parallel lines, so this must be theta as well and the celestial north pole was at 90 degrees declination, which makes, let's use a red, this angle here, what? 90 minus theta. 90 minus theta. Theta. 
Similarly, this angle here is also 90 minus theta, which makes the declination of the central south pole is negative 90 minus theta degrees. Remember, the declinations below the celestial equator were negative numbers. Now, let me show you. Um, let's go back to the uh, Stellarium window and let me show you what these are. Now, here's what you expect to see, okay? The Earth is rotating in this direction around its own axis. As a result, when you look at, um, let's say, when you look in this direction, in the northern direction, this is what you will see. This is the northern horizon, north, and there will be a star, which doesn't change its position over time, that's Polaris. And everything around it will be spinning as Earth spins. They will be actually spinning in this direction. Okay. Similarly, if uh, from where you are, if you turn your face towards south, if you look in this direction, well, you can't see the uh, celestial south pole that's below the horizon. This is the horizon. And this was the horizon for the north. But pretty much, I mean, the, the, the pole is below the horizon. You can't see it. But the stars will be moving clockwise when you look south. Okay? So when you look in the north direction, everything rotates around Polaris counterclockwise. When you look south, they rotate uh, clockwise. Now the declination, I was talking about declination. Remember, the declination of Polaris is 90 degrees. That is above the horizon. So since the rotation is around Polaris, why don't we consider circles around Polaris? Okay, so the North Pole, the Celestial North Pole is where Polaris is, almost. That is 90. And this line around that, let's go in tens, let this be 80 degrees. And the next line will be 70, and then you will have another one, 60, right? So between 60 and 90, how many degrees? 30 degrees. That's why you had this here, theta, okay? I'm assuming we're in Houston, that's why it's 30, of course. If you're in Boston, it'll be over 40, 41, 42, right? Um, and then when you look in the uh, south, these will also have uh, similar numbers. This will probably be negative 50, negative 40, and then you will have negative 30, all the way to zero. And zero would be the celestial equator. Okay, so let's see this uh, using Stellarium. I'm gonna switch to Stellarium now. Let's turn this on. Okay, so let's switch back to Houston. Houston. All right, I'm gonna close this window here. Okay, now this is, let's take it to current time, 12.52 p.m., all right? Now I'm going to use the arrows. Okay, that's good. Now we're looking in the north right now, north, okay? And the stars just appear as dots above us, okay? Now it's daytime right now. Normally you can't see the stars, of course. Um, so I just turn the atmosphere off. If I just turn it on, it's blue sky, okay? I'm just trying to make a point here, so let me just turn the atmosphere off. So this is what you would see in the night sky. 
Now, we can uh, speed up the time, okay? Either use this button here or hit L a couple of times. And everything will start spinning. Okay, hopefully you can see the spinning right now. They're spinning in this direction in a uh, counterclockwise fashion. And this star here is not changing its location. That's Polaris, okay, the um, North Star. Now let's turn on the, the equatorial grid. All right, now it'll make much more sense. It's better than what I drew, right? So this is 90 degrees here. And then you move here, the first circle here, that's the 80 degrees. And this one here is 70 degrees. This one over here, 60. Those are the declination, okay? Now let's switch to uh, south. When you look in the south, everything is now rotating in the clockwise direction. Okay? In the clockwise direction. And let me just stop it. Okay, here I have negative 30, negative 20, negative 10, and I can see the tip of uh, the celestial equator but it goes all the way down to 40 50 and where the south is that's going to be uh, 60. actually if i turn the earth off this is not really physical but now i can see below the horizon if earth was transparent this is what i would see okay so here negative 50 and negative 60 is going right across the uh, southern horizon. Okay, let me turn ground back on. Okay, so it's rotating in a clockwise direction. Now what about the second number we need uh, to determine the position of a uh, star? Now as you can see the stars move with those lines okay so every star here should have a unique pair of numbers and only one of them is declination but along this line the declination is the same along this curve so how do you differentiate between this star and that star over there that's the second number we need just like the latitude and longitude on a uh, on the on the earth define the points exactly or uniquely in the celestial sphere celestial uh, dome besides the declination we need a second number and that's called the right ascension okay let me turn this off for a second and go back to our uh, blackboard We have declination, and the second number we need is right ascension, or DEC, D-E-C, and R-A for short. All right, this second number will be found following these uh, lines. It's like slicing a pie or pizza. Okay, same thing in the south direction. This is the center that you don't see. The parts that you see are like this. Okay, so these lines have the same right ascension number. What is the number range we use? We do not use degrees. Uh, we use hours. One full rotation of Earth corresponds to 360 degrees. 
and we have of course 24 hours so if you divide 360 by uh, 24 you get 15 degrees okay so each line is 15 degrees apart now when these lines or when these uh, stars move in time in one hour they will move from here to there if you're looking the south and if you're looking north in one hour they will move from here to there okay so we're gonna use basically uh, 24 of these lines and we're gonna number them in hours this will be one hour this will be zero hours this will be two hours three hours etc okay and here if this is two hours this will be three hours this will be four hours which means that you star a star that you see over here will be over there in two hours okay it takes two hours to go from here to there that's what it means let's check it now let's go back to uh, Stellarium okay let me just turn it on all right so right now uh, Rigel here is a little bit uh, it's like 5.3 hours maybe okay so let's turn the time Okay, this is where Rigel is. I'm gonna change this to. Okay. 19, 20. Okay, two hours passed. Now Rigel is right there. Okay, I mean, same thing I could do in the north as well. So let's go north. Okay, let's pick a star. Let's say this star over here, or, or this one, which is at uh, 13 hours. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In eight hours, this star will move all the way to here, to top. So let's check it. I'm gonna increase the 21. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm not sure if I count correctly, but you get the idea, okay? In one hour, uh, the star goes from here to there, pretty much. Okay, so this is called the right ascension, right ascension. The numbers range from uh, 1 to 24. Now, let's... Okay, as it spins like this, see this is 21 over here, 20, 21, 22, now a star is at 23, and now 12, 1, okay, so. Let's switch to south. Two, three, let's go faster, four, twelve. Don't want it too fast. Okay, that's what fifteen, sixteen, on to rest, seventeen hours, eighteen hours. I'm just looking at the uh, right ascension in the southeast direction, nineteen hours. 20 hours, 21, 22, 23, fall out, and zero. Okay, back to zero. 24 and zero are the same. Now, you gotta be careful. The stars do not change their 
right ascension, but we also see the sun. Let me stop it for a second. Here we have the sun. And here we have plants, okay? And the moon, we don't see the moon, but the same thing applies to the moon. Uh, the right ascension changes throughout the year, okay? Actually, uh, how we define the zero hour depends on the position of or the location of the sun on the 21st of March, okay, the spring equinox or vernal equinox. So let's go to uh, spring, I'm sorry, uh, March, March uh, 21st. March 21st, around March 21st. And let's try to locate the sun. Let's go, oops, let me click here. Let's go find the sun, right here. Okay, we found the sun. So, the sun will be exactly at the uh, celestial equator. This is the same for uh, the spring e equinox or autumn equinox, all right? If you wait for six months, the same thing will happen. But if you um, trace the location of the sun, now I'm gonna, instead of increasing days, I'm gonna increase the months here. Now watch what happens to the sun here. I'm gonna click this, make it four, five. You see, it moved, six, seven, eight, nine, it's back where it is, okay? So this location here, this vertical line, the right ascension is 12 hours in December. Now move ahead six months again, 10, 11, 12, so January, February, back to March, the sun is here again, that is zero, okay? So this is zero, one, two, three, it goes like this. So the starting point for the right ascension is the location of the sun on the 21st of March. Okay, that's the convention. And not only it is at the zero right ascension, it is also at the uh, zero declination, which is the celestial equator, okay? So just like the, the prime meridian is chosen as uh, the observatory in Greenwich, England, uh, the starting point for the right ascension, which is zero hours, is chosen as uh, the location of the sun around the 21st of March, the spring equinox. Okay, so those are the two numbers, the declination and the right ascension. Um, if you know uh, the coordinates of two points, let's say in New York and San Francisco, if you know the coordinates, you know how far they are apart in terms of degrees. And you can convert that degrees to um, hours using that formula, right? Each hour slice is 15 degrees using that you can find the hour difference between the two cities and you can immediately know how much time you have to wait until you see the star at a certain location okay so if a star if if the separation is let's say uh three hours between uh two cities on earth and you see the star rising um, in the east Okay, 9 p.m. and this means in uh, 12 p.m. I'm sorry, 12 a.m. midnight, you will see the same star in the other city, which is west of the first city. Okay, so this is the reason why we use hours instead of degrees when it comes to finding the position in an uh, east-west direction. Okay, so north-south direction on the celestial sphere is determined by the declination and the east-west direction is determined by the um, right ascension. Now, besides declination and right ascension, 
Remember, there was another way. There is another set of numbers, a pair, which is used to determine the uh, coordinates of a point in the sky. And that's, those are called the azimuthal coordinates, the azimuth and the altitude. So let me just turn this off for a second. And let's go back to our blackboard. So the second method here, um, the first one was declination versus right ascension. The second one uses two numbers called azimuth and uh, altitude. Now the azimuth and altitude don't have anything to do with Earth's rotation. It just has to do with the visible portion of the sky when you look up and uh, you slice that hemisphere, that dome, into parts just like you were slicing um, it using the uh, declination and right ascension but those points will not move, okay? The azimuth and altitude will not move as Earth rotates. So what will happen then? The coordinates of the stars in this coordinate system, azimuth and altitude, will constantly change. But your zenith, remember the top point when you look up in the sky, right above you, the zenith over here? Zenith will be the center point or sort of a pole for your azimuthal coordinate system. And um, we're going to define north as 0 and south is 180, right? So we have east and west. East will be 90 and west will be 270. These are the azimuth, okay? Azimuth. And the altitude will tell you in terms of degrees where you are above the horizon, okay? The horizon is the eye level, right? So it doesn't matter if you're looking south or north or west or east. As long as you're looking at the eye level, it's always the zero, the horizontal line, okay? So the zero is the starting point for the altitude. And if you look straight up all the way to zenith, that's where you hit 90 degrees. Okay, so the altitude changes between 0 and 90. And you uh, look above what you will see. Now let me switch to um, uh, Stellarium again. And let's turn date and time off. Actually, let me just uh, switch to today's time. All right, and uh, I can start the time a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna turn off the equatorial grid. Now, which direction am I looking at? I'm looking at south, okay? So this is the horizon level, eye level, horizon. Along this line, the altitude is zero, zero degrees. And if I look above, up, the angles will increase, the altitude will increase. So let me turn on the azimuthal grid. You see this point here in the middle? That's right above me. That's the zenith, okay? That's where the altitude is exactly 90. All right, 90. Um, let's go down, north, south. I'm gonna look west. Again, the altitude is zero. But now the azimuth is 270, that's west. Let's go north, here. The altitude is still zero the horizon 
but the uh, azimuth is zero. If I go look at west, I'm sorry, east, somewhere around here, then the azimuth is 90. Okay, so this is the alternate description of the uh, hemisphere above us, the celestial hemisphere, in terms of coordinates that don't change, meaning it don't uh, depend on rotation, okay? As you see, the stars change their azimuthal coordinates constantly in this picture. What about the points we cannot see, which is below the horizon? Let me turn off the uh, ground. Okay, now I can look below and I will see actually another point which is anti-zenith, right below me, which is called the nadir, N-A-D-I-R, nadir. And that's where the, as the, uh, the altitude is, negative 90, okay? But this is a place which, which we don't see normally because Earth is on the, along the way, ground is there. Earth is not transparent, so if I turn it on, I won't see it, ground. Okay, so these are the two ways of uh, using spherical coordinates in our celestial um, sky or celestial sphere. Either the declination versus right ascension, which are coordinates, fixed coordinates to find the stars, but the stars move. Or you can use the uh, altitude and azimuth. Azimuth will tell you uh, the cardinal direction in the horizontal and the uh, altitude will t tell you where to look if you turn your head up, okay, in the vertical direction. Now, uh, let's go back to north. Remember, the north star, Polaris, doesn't change its position. Okay? And its position in the sky which is 30 degrees above the horizon. The horizon is zero altitude and 10 degrees, 20 and 30. It's close to 30 because that's where we are in Houston, okay? So the, the latitude uh, in degrees will tell you where to find Polaris in the north above the horizon. If your latitude is close to 30, it will be 30 degrees above the horizon. Um, now, Polaris is not spe specially a bright star, okay? It's not bright, so you may not immediately see it. And also, you don't really see the stars rotating this fast. Let me switch back to normal speed. Okay, so this is actually normal speed. If you just wait for a minute, you may not be able to see which stars have moved, which has not. Okay, which have not. So, how are you gonna determine which is the uh, north star? You gonna you don't have any uh, compass, you don't have any map, a GPS. You're lost. You wanna find your way. So, where is the north star? Okay. Now you can find it. There are ways to find it. Um, since the ancient times, people have uh, imagined lines connecting stars. Okay, now let me turn the coordinate system off. And if you keep staring at the stars long enough, you will immediately start connecting um, some stars, especially the brighter ones with them, okay? So you may even imagine uh, pictures that correspond to it. Now, uh, officially we have 88 such groupings of stars. And these are called constellations. Let me turn the constellations on. Okay, these are the lines that I'm talking about, okay? So, there are uh, five of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. And uh, if, you, if your imagination is good, you can resemble them to animals and things like this, okay? That's why they're called... Uh, <coughs> You see a big bear here, and a little bear. In Latin, uh, ursa means uh, bear. 
So Ursa Major, the big bear, and Ursa Minor is the little bear. Okay, so you have um, 88. I mean, they may look like a bird to some people, or like a lizard, or I mean, depending on your favorite animal, historical, cultural names. But officially, there are 88 such constellations in sky. Okay, 88. And sometimes uh, a part of a constellation may look also like a different object. Okay, now look at the uh, Ursa Major here, the big bear. You see this one? Now only focus on, okay, let me, it's not visible here. Let me turn the time uh, backwards a little bit or forward, I'm sorry. Run the time forward. Okay, and I'm gonna stop in a little bit. Let me see the full constellation. Okay, now I see the full constellation in view, right? This is the full bear. But for a second, turn off the bear. Okay. You may even turn off the lines because my lines can be different from your lines. You immediately see that there's a group of stars here which look brighter than the rest. See, this one's here, those ones. If you just connect those lines here, but not the rest, only these ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay, just this part. It looks like a utensil, like a dipper, right? And so is this one. This one's smaller. Remember, this was Ursa Minor, the little bear, and this was the big bear. But part of the big bear is this dipper, which is the big dipper, as opposed to little dipper, right? So those are also, those also have names, and we call them the asterisms, okay? Asterism. So an asterism can be a part of a constellation, or sometimes an asterism can extend over two or three constellations. I mean, or sometimes an, an asterism can be the constellation itself, as it is in the case for the little bear, which is now Little Dipper, okay? So there are 88 constellations and there are many asterisms like this. Now, going back to locating um, the North Star, Polaris, which is here, remember? If we speed up again, now you see this point here is the Polaris. Now this happens to be actually part of that uh, Ursa Minor, or Little Dipper, right? Now if you, can locate little, if you can locate Little Dipper directly, no problem, you found Polaris. But if you see the uh, Big Dipper first, what do you do? Okay, so let's uh, do that. Let's wait until the Big Dipper is fully in view. And I'm gonna stop here now. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off the lines here. Okay, let's locate the Big Dipper. One, two, or maybe including this, one, two, three, four. But now these, you see those stars here? These ones? Now once you locate the Big Dipper, focus on this side, imagine a line that joins these two stars, and move about uh, 30 degrees in this direction, and then you will find the Polaris, North Star Polaris. Okay, so you locate the uh, Big Dipper, which is part of the uh, Ursa, Ma Ursa Major uh, constellation. And from these stars, go this way, and you're gonna find the North Star, which is part of the Little Dipper. If you live in the Northern Hemisphere, if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, is there a way to find your way when you're lost, okay? Unfortunately, we don't have a specific star which is um, 
exactly at the uh, southern celestial pole. But um, there is a uh, constellation called uh, Southern Cross or Crux. So let's let me take you there. So let's go to um, okay, uh, search, search. Let's type uh, Crux or Southern Cross. Southern Cross. Well, there's a Southern Cross galaxy, but what I mean is the constellation, really. So let me just go there. Okay, now this is uh, going to be below the horizon, so I'm going to turn off the um, ground. Okay, so. Okay, so right here. Now you see four bright stars there, okay? Four bright stars. Let me turn off the lines. Right there, you see four bright stars. So if you live in South America, you just look for these four lines, which form a cross. Let me zoom in a little bit, huh? So you see better. Okay, right there. One, two, three, four. Four stars. Let me turn on the constellation lines. Okay. Now these will point at the celestial uh, pole. Okay. Celestial pole. So let's start spinning faster. Okay. So I'm going to move up a little bit in this way. Okay. It's almost there. Somewhere in this region. See this cross here? This cross points at a point here, which will be our celestial south pole. Now if I turn the equatorial grid again, right there, okay? So that's how you would locate uh, approximately uh, the southern pole. Let me stop it again. So here's your southern cross. One, two, three, four stars. And if you go along this line, you go like this. So one, two, two and a half. Around uh, how many degrees is that? 25 degrees, you will find the uh, southern celestial pole. All right, so that's how you can use uh, constellations and star charts. Um, what else? Okay, let me pause for a second. Okay, it looks like uh, I covered everything that I wanted to do in this lecture. So, um, by now we know what declination and um, right ascension mean, and also um, azimuth and uh, the uh, altitude okay so we have three sets of uh, spherical coordinates the third one is of course the latitude and longitude on our earth okay so I'm gonna stop here until next time goodbye <laughs>